Gunther Messner and Reinhold Messner were born in South Tyrol. Reinhold was born on 17 September 1944, while Gunther, the younger brother, was born on 18 May 1946. Inspired by their father's tales of mountaineering adventures, they dreamed of conquering the world's highest peaks. Together, they embarked on numerous expeditions, honing their skills and pushing their limits. When they both reached their late teenage years, they were already reaching the heights of success and people started recognizing them. By this time, these brothers had already developed an unbreakable bond, and this is how they started their unstoppable journey towards all the high peaks of the world, which they eventually submitted. Reinhold Messner rose to prominence in the 1960s as one of the most prominent and early proponents of what is now known as the Alpine style of mountaineering, which emphasizes the use of scant, lightweight gear and little to no outside aid. The younger brothers Gunther and Habiler, whom he joined on his 1969 expedition to the Peruvian Andes, shared a similar outlook. Gunther and Reinhold were two of the best and most successful alpinists of their times. Reinhold climbed some of the most difficult routes in the Alps during the 1960s. He was the first man in history to climb all 14 8,000ers. He climbed the world's highest peak, Mount Everest, without any supplemental oxygen. This was a big achievement for the Messner brothers. His climbs were also mentioned in the top 20 individual climbs of the world. Reinhold Messner became the first person to summit all 14 8,000 meter summits when he and Hans Kammerlander scale Lhotse, the fourth highest peak in the world, in 1986. In his book, Messner talks about the 14 mountain climbs and expeditions that made him famous and contentious. Gunther and Reinhold, however, were brothers and both had that ignite to do something about this world. They both wanted to attempt the summit of Nanga Parbat. In 1970, the Messner brothers set their sights on Nanga Parbat, a mountain known for its unforgiving weather and treacherous terrain. Their goal was to achieve an audacious feat, climbing the Rupal face, a sheer vertical wall that had never been conquered before. This expedition was led by Carl Herlinghofer. After his half-brother, climber Willie Merkel, and eight other climbers perished on the peak in 1934, Herlinghofer was believed to be obsessed with the mountain and had already planned six journeys to Nanga Parbat. The expedition team was already and excited for this summit as they had been planning it for a long time. The Messner brothers were determined to summit Nanga Parbat and make their names high in the climbing world, only if they knew that this particular expedition wouldn't go as per their plan. At the base camp, the Messner brothers meticulously planned their ascent. They studied maps, assessed the weather conditions, and strategized a route up to Rapal Face. They knew that success would depend on their physical strength, mental resilience, and precise decision-making. The team was at the Peshawar base camp when they were checking the weather. If the light turned blue, it would indicate that the weather was fine for the summit. But if it turned red, then they needed to think again about the plan to summit. It was the 26th of June, 1970, when they started their expedition with the proper team and equipment. They intended to climb the Rupal face of Nanga Parbat, situated in Pakistan. The Rupal face is known as one of the highest ice and rock walls. It is very steep only experienced climbers take this route because it is full of challenges and dangers. But this is what the two Messner brothers were looking forward to. They were fully confident to climb this route, as this is what they have been practicing for the past many years, and this was a time to showcase their skills. Many of the climbers used to say to Reinhold and Gunther that they were not going to survive because all those crazy expeditions that they attempt will take their life one day. But the two brothers were determined and knew that this was what they were alive for. This particular expedition was special because it was an unclean part of Nanga Parbat and what better chance they could find to explore it. There was some kind of disturbance within the expedition team from the very start. Reinhold was not satisfied with some ethics of climbing. He was continuously trying to make the other team members understand the situation and he tried to make them realize the bad weather and the bad decisions they were making, but it was to no avail. Reinhold himself also wanted to climb the mountain's Rupal face as soon as possible, but Carl tried to make him understand that it would be risky to do things in a hurry, as it is a steep route and they have to consider the other team members too. Reinhold didn't want to take anyone's advice, and on the 27th of June in the early morning, he decided to go solo to summit the Rupal face. 
To avoid the reported inclement weather, Rainhold launched a single quick and light attack without any equipment shortly after 2 a.m. Gerhard and Gunther were still sleeping. Rainhold struggled to climb the Merkel Kular by torch, but managed it to the summit shortly before dawn. He enjoyed this solo trek as he knew the mountains were his place to be, and he knew how to conquer them. While he was ascending the Nanga Parbat, he had to pass a rock ice wall, which was considered the most dangerous way to pass. But it was Reinhold, and he very easily made his way up. Back at the base camp, Gunther and Gerhard Bauer were setting up the rope the next morning at daybreak to ease Reinhold's return. Gunther, according to Bauer, made a hurried choice when he abandoned the ropes they were mending and raced into the difficult Merkel Kular, which he later soloed. Gunther had followed his brother and rushed to join him as soon as possible, and luckily, they arrived at the summit together in the late afternoon. Just as Gunther was tired after his earlier in the day attempt to catch up with Reinhold, Reinhold was surprised to see his young, inexperienced brother climbing the ice wall so quickly and easily. Now the next part seems full of suspicion and doubts, as there is a contradiction in what Reinhold told the media and what other alpinists had to say about this tragic incident. They reached the peak of the mountain one hour before sunset, and it was a beautiful feeling. They were happy to the fullest. The brothers embraced each other and took a moment to appreciate the beauty of the mountains, of the world, and the abilities they both possessed. Then they decided to descend as the sunlight was fading minute by minute, and they had a few hours to reach the base camp safely. As they were planning the descent and the precautions they needed to take, Reinhold sensed that Gunther was losing his strength. He was showing signs of high altitude sickness. This made him worried as they had a long way to descend, and with Gunther getting sick, it was impossible to reach on time. Reinhold says that Gunther was afraid to descend down to the base camp via Rupal face, so they decided to go to Diamer face. This part of Nanga Parbat was never discovered before, and they didn't know what kind of risk they would be encountering. However, this was the only possible way for them to descend quicker. Gunther's health was deteriorating with every passing second, but they kept going without much equipment or help. It was the third day of their descent, with no heater or other equipment. Gunther was exhausted to the core. The two climbers' physical and mental fortitude had been put to the test during the multi-day descent, which came to a tragic end when Gunther disappeared at the base of the Dimer face, most likely killed by an ice avalanche during the fall. Reinhold was devastated about losing his brother to the bad weather and was exhausted too. However, he kept moving. Some local shepherds saw him descending, bruised and drained out. He helped him to get down to the base camp. It's been 66 years now that people keep sharing their sense on this tragic incident, but no one has yet to come to a conclusion on what actually happened. However, Reinhold made it clear that it was the bad weather and Gunther's exhaustion that led him to lose him. Climber Hans-Peter Einsandl discovered a human fibula near the base of Nanga Parbat's Daimir wall in July 2000. Following a thorough DNA analysis, it was highly suggested that it belonged to Gunther. Reinhold recognized his brother's attire and footwear, brown leather Loa triple footwear, as he approached the site. When Reinhold left, the bones were still within the boot. On July 17, 2005, Three native Pakistani guides discovered the climber's remains on the Daimir face at 4,300 meters, an hour's walk above the Daimir base camp, close to where Reinhold believed Gunther had gone missing. In June 2022, a second boot was found at the foot of Daimir Glacier by the local people of Pakistan. A picture of the boot was posted by Reinhold himself on his Instagram account. Gunther's remains were given a funeral in Tibetan culture. His remains were burned near the foot of the Nanga Parbat on September 8, 2005. Following Tibetan custom, Reinhold and his expedition team of 14 hikers and two journalists also built a shorten, a memorial made of a square stack of stones. This tomb now reminds us of the young, energetic, and kind Gunther Messner. Whatever the events may be, whatever the controversy has risen from this tragic ascent of Nanga Parbat is, what we cannot change is the outcome, the loss of Gunther Messner.